afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. The subject of hemp is controversial. Supporters cite its history in the U.S. and its economic and agronomic advantages. Critics call it illegal and a slippery slope to legalizing marijuana. The legalities around industrial hemp are complicated. The 2014 United States Farm Bill allows academic institutions to study the growth, cultivation, or marketing of industrial hemp. This spring, the UVM Extension Northwest Crops and Soils Program began their industrial hemp research project. What these researchers have learned so far has little to do with controversy and everything to do with helping Vermont farmers. Across the fence is Keith Silva has our report. At Porterview Research Farm in Alberg, there's testing taking place on sunflowers, corn, and hops. But none of those projects requires no trespassing signs like those flanking the stands of hemp. So our primary interest right now is in looking at the grain production and seed production, and then what can we do with the seed? Heather Darby is a University of Vermont Extension agronomist. She's the lead researcher for these hemp trials. Farmers in Vermont are always interested in finding crops that are gonna be economically viable for them. Um, and I think Vermont's a place where we grow lots of crops that um, are used for special end uses, and farmers are looking for niches here in this state to stay economically viable, and hemp might potentially be one of those crops. And really our goal here is to figure out, will it make sense? Does it make sense um, agronomically, economically, and environmentally to, to grow hemp in this state? Hemp was a staple in colonial America. Both George Washington and Thomas Jefferson extolled its virtues for farmers and for industry. Classified in the cannabis genus, hemp contains less than 0.3% of THC, the psychoactive chemical found in marijuana. Hemp is a crop, cannabis sativa, that has multiple types in the same family. So it's like looking at a bulldog and, and a poodle and saying, yep, they're both dogs, so they're exactly the same. But a bulldog is very different than a poodle. And it's the same way when we talk about um, industrial hemp versus recreational marijuana. They are both cannabis sativa, but they're both very different crops. Because of its chemical connection to marijuana, hemp is classified as a Schedule I drug in the United States. That means it's illegal to grow hemp or to import viable seeds to the U.S. That band was loosened somewhat when the 2014 Farm Bill was signed into law. Section 7606 allows academic institutions like UVM to legally develop research programs to evaluate industrial hemp. This spring, Darby and her team of researchers planted their first crop of industrial hemp. Darby has learned a lot about growing hemp in this first year of the project. One of the primary pieces that I learned was it does seem a bit weak as a seedling. It wasn't overly vigorous. We tried to cultivate it to control weeds and we lost a lot of hemp that way. So we were really worried about the crop. I didn't think for the life of me that it could outcompete the weeds. And then all of a sudden, you know, it got to be about a foot tall and then and and immediately had a growth spurt, like it was a teenager or something, and it just grew. Um, you know, it seemed like three or four feet in, in a matter of a week and a half or two weeks and immediately rose above the weeds, wasn't an issue anymore, became a much more vigorous sort of hardy plant. For Darby, then, growing hemp um, has nothing to do with you know, politics or the law. Her goal is to provide Vermont farmers with research-based knowledge to succeed, regardless of the crop. I mean, I just want to find crops to help farmers stay viable and you know and I think this is a unique crop so there's um, there's a lot of businesses out there that exist a lot of businesses that are trying to get started right now um, I think some of the barriers will diminish over time even over the two years we've been working on this some of the barriers have lessened diminished a bit the USDA likely at some point will start funding the research you know um, Hopefully, you know, one of my goals is to have our own seed industry in Vermont so that we don't have to worry about importing seed, which is really probably the most important goal for us to reach before anything else. We know it can grow, you can see it growing here. Um, it looks very well, it's doing very well, but 
access to seed is probably the most significant barrier. So growing seed locally is actually a pretty immediate need. I am a true believer. Uh, this crop has been um, misunderstood. Uh, Nataka White is the co-owner of the Full Sun Company, valuable. a Middlebury-based business that sells non-GMO culinary oils made from locally grown sunflower and canola seeds. This is an extra virgin um, process, uh, so it's cold pressed. There's no preheating of the seeds or any high temperatures. We really just press the seed and filter it. There's no refining that happens. The room behind us is the seed room, and this feeds into the oil room. The White's oil no stranger to hemp. He used to own a company specializing in making clothing and accessories from imported hemp. In 2013, the Vermont legislature, perhaps anticipating the U.S. Farm Bill, went ahead and relaxed restrictions on growing hemp. White was one of the first to register to grow hemp in Vermont under the new law. The registration process is very simple. It's the simplest, uh, most streamlined um, setup in the country. Anyone who's a resident of Vermont can go online to the Agency of Ag and download a one-page hemp registration form where they want to know who you are, um, where you'll be, where you live, and where you'll be growing the crop, and how much of an, you know, how many acres or what, how much of it you'll be growing, and pay a $25 registration fee. You mail in your check, and you're one of, in this case, about 20 or so registered hemp growers in the state. According to the Vermont Agency of Agriculture, there are 26 registered hemp growers for 2016. That's slightly up from the 20 growers in 2015 and the 17 growers in the years 2013 and 14 combined. On its website, the Vermont Agency of Agriculture states, hemp growers are advised they may face challenges at the federal level. So here's the catch 22. Vermonters who register can grow hemp, but it remains illegal in the U.S. to purchase viable hemp seed. I've been at this for so long and finally, you know, had the opportunity legally to be able to grow hemp and so I uh, stayed, stayed with it and found a source online that was a food, um, it was a snacking seed. It turns out that they were sterilized. I, I ordered them from the UK. Um, they came here in about 10 days, and when it came, it was in the winter, when it came time to plant them, I had to, had to plant um, almost a pound of them to, in a very small area to end up with about 20 plants. But the sterilized as they were, there, there was enough germination, barely, to get me started. And those 20 plants ended up being uh, about a pound of seed. After saving seeds since 2013, White has partnered with a farmer in Waitsfield and is now growing half an acre of hemp. The seeds of the plant hold high value. They're pressed for oil that's used in food products and things like cosmetics. The rest of the plant, from the stalks to the leaves, goes into everything from clothing to home insulation. White expects to plant five acres next year with the goal of planting 50 acres within two years. That would yield enough hemp to press oil commercially. For us, commercial crop would be at least 50 acres. Conservative estimate, 50 acres would give us about 25 tons. And so we purchase our seeds currently, our sunflower and non-GMO canola in 25 ton lots. That's about a month's worth of production. So we have enough to introduce a line into the market and be able to sustain that. For a true believer like White, UVM Extension's research into industrial hemp holds promise for Vermont growers and businesses like the Full Sun Company. The research project and program is in very capable hands with um, Heather Darby and the Crops and Soils team. Uh, they're really behind it, they know what they're doing, and we're extremely excited, Full Sun is, and I personally am uh, very happy that, that we've you know, finally gotten to this, to this point. Why we're excited is that information is going to travel from Roots and Research out into the, the hands of other farmers that are saying, well, at least I want to try this. The worldwide market for hemp products is more than half a billion dollars and growing. The source for those products is Europe, Canada, and China. For hemp to be a viable crop in this country and Vermont, it's going to depend on the innovative nature and stick to of farmers. To me, I don't like to be left behind. Right, so why aren't we in Vermont on the forefront of something instead of behind waiting for everybody else to do it, you know? And, and that's always been 
you know, the way I operate, if I see an opportunity that I think that we should go after, let's go after it if we, if we believe that it could be something that would be good for Vermont farmers. And, you know, this is a row crop. This isn't a crop that actually requires that much special equipment. So we're not trying to build new planters or a new kind of harvester. You know, this is harvested with a combine. And most states are looking at this as a commodity. And you know, obviously we're not gonna grow hemp as a commodity in Vermont, likely not. And so the way we're looking at it is, how can we produce the highest quality hemp products in Vermont? Um, maybe it's organic or you know, sustainable, whatever you know, the approach we're gonna take, it'll be like everything else we do here. Um, it'll be for a local market with really high-end, high-quality products. Like the corn and the canola, hemp will become just another crop at Border View Research Farm, a plant with the potential to change the agronomic and economic landscape in a very Vermont way. In Alberg, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. Well, Heather Darby joins me now in the studio along with Abba Gupta, who is a member of the Northwest Crops and Soils team. Thanks so much for being with us today. Abba, how is this project funded? So this project is funded through a few different ways. Um, we received a grant from United Natu Natural Foods Incorporated, um, received money from the Dr. Bronner's Soap Company, and then also used crowdfunding, to set up a crowdfunding website and raised money that way. And so uh, the crowdfunding way, we chose to go that route for a couple of different reasons. For one, um, a lot of the typical routes that we would go through, federal funds at this point aren't set up to provide funding for hemp. And so um, we wanted to go through the crowdfunding route. And then also um, a big goal behind this research really is to make the findings publicly available. And so this research from the crowdfunding campaign, we've got supporters who are interested in this research, who wanna support our program. They're people coming from Vermont and the region. And so, um, money that's coming in that way, we're allowed to share the research with f the farming community. And so in the video, Heather, you talked about having a seed industry in Vermont. What's the legality around that, though? Um, well, the legalities really reside with the, the people that own the genetics themselves. So a seed company or, or a plant breeder develops a, a hemp variety. One example is uh, a variety we have called Anka. Mm -hmm. Somebody owns that variety. And so the legality around us growing it is first um, building a relationship with the seed company and the seed breeder that owns the variety, um, getting the legal documents to import the seed into the United States, working with the seed um, breeder, seed owner, to um, essentially license the variety, pay them royalties for the pounds of seed that we grow, um, and then grow the seed. And so the seeds that are on the plants now, what's going to happen with them? Is that something that you can use in the future for future crops? Well, we actually, um, we have to utilize the seed in that given year uh, based on um, our permit with uh, the DEA. And so our goal is to take measurements on the seed and then we'll um, likely process the seed for oil and meal um, and do some analysis of the seed to look at overall quality and then we'll be done with it. Have you had a lot of interest in this project? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's been um, it's been wonderful, actually. Starting with the crowd funding that we did, we knew we've always heard that you know people wanted this to happen, and that was really a testament that people really wanted to happen. The people of Vermont made it happen. They're supporting it. They're really paying for the public research on hemp. So the outpouring of support has been wonderful both you know, from emails, people coming out to visit the farm, mm -hmm. wanting to know more, and, and putting their money behind it. Well, if our viewers want to learn more about the UVM Extension Hemp Trials and, and take a virtual tour of the project, visit the website on your screen. At the end of the year, the results from the research will be posted on that webpage. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Judy. That's our program for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.